Good morning, kiddos. Um, so I am obviously out today and I wanted to make sure you guys got your lesson 2.4 notes. Um, it's actually pretty straightforward. So um, we're going to talk through it and pause so you guys can take down some notes. Um, just really quickly before we get started, you probably went already went over your warm up, which is great. Um, also take a look to the right side on the whiteboard. Hey, I've announced that you guys have your chapter two test on Tuesday. That's a week from today. So I want you guys to make sure that you start studying. The review is already posted online. Um, so it on Google Classroom. So you can find the review. It's out of your textbook. And you can begin your review. It will be due on the day of the test. Okay, so you can get started on that. Um, okay, so let's begin talking about 2.4. Okay, so lesson 2.4 is about modeling with quadratics. And the main thing you want to take away from the objective here is that I will be able to write equations of quadratic functions, okay, using vertices, points, and x-intercepts. So we are going to be writing the equations of quadratic functions. Now, in 2.3, you learned how to do that using the focus and the directrix. In 2.4, you're going to be learning how to do that if you're given certain information. So if you take a look right here under given information, you have three bits of given information that you could be looking at. So you have in this, the situation where you're given a point and the vertex, HK. You have the situation when you're given a point and the x-intercepts, P and Q. And then you have the situation where you're given three points that are on the parabola. So you have the vertex and a point on the parabola. You have the x-intercepts and a point on the parabola, and then just three any points on the parabola. Now, depending on what information that you are given, that tells you which quadratic form to use. And that's what's really important here, is that you read the information and you determine what form to use. Now, it's pretty obvious, though. So if you're given the vertex and a point, then you kind of want to use the vertex form. Okay, so you want to use the vertex form of the parabola of a quadratic, which is your f of x equals a um, x minus h squared plus k. And one thing to make sure that you remember is this right here, where your y, right, f of x and y are the same thing. So f of x and y are interchangeable. So really, this is also equal to the same thing as y equals a x minus h squared plus k. Okay. So we'll talk about in a bit how you use the vertex and the point, but you can already guess that you're going to be plugging in the HK for your H and your K, and then you'll be using your point here to find your A. Okay, so A is the key thing that you're going to need to solve for here, because you can't just assume that A is 1 or that A is negative 1 or that A is whatever number that you want it to be. You actually have to figure out what A is your function, does your function have? And that's where the point comes in. And we'll talk about that in a bit. Given a point and the x-intercepts, this is also pretty self-explanatory. If you're given the x-intercepts, P and Q, then you should probably use intercept form, where you have y equals a times x minus P times x minus Q. So you'll take your P and your Q, your x-intercepts, and plug them in for P and Q here. And then again, once again, you're going to need to find that A. You want to know exactly what A is. That's where that point comes in. And then you have given three points. Now, if you're given any three points on a parabola, this takes us back to chapter one, where we have write a system of three equations in three variables. Okay, But we're not really going to be talking about given three points. We're really just focusing on given information and Give, uh, given the vertex and a point, and then given x-intercept and a point. So let's take a look at some examples for using a vertex and a point. Um, at this, over here, you can pause to uh, let them copy down if they need any extra time, but they should just be writing this bit down right here. Okay, let's take a look at our example. We have write an equation of the parabola that passes through the point 0, 15 and has the vertex of 50, 35. So this is the point on the parabola, 0, 15, and our vertex is 50, 35. Well, if we take a look at our vertex and our point, okay, our vertex is h and k. 
So we can take vertex form and we can plug in our h and our k into our function here. Okay, so we have our h goes in for h here. So we have a times x minus 50 plus k, which is 35. But if you'll notice here, you have a y, an a, and an x, and you need to know what y is. That's where your point comes in. Every point that's on the parabola is of the form x comma y. So we can take x and we can plug it in for x here, and we can take y and we can plug it in for y here in this one time thing so that we may solve for a. And so when you plug in your x and your y from the point that was given, you end up with 15 for y is equal to a, because that's what we're looking for, parentheses 0 for the x minus 50 squared, okay, plus 35. And from here, we're going to simplify. So first in the parentheses, we're going to do 0 minus 50. That gives us negative 50. So I have a negative 50, a, so 15 is equal to a times negative 50 squared plus 35. We're going to square this guy. Negative 50 squared is negative 50 times negative 50, which brings us to 2,500 here. Now, this is the same thing as 2,500 times A. So I can copy, re rewrite that, and I have 15 is equal to 2,500 A plus 30. Okay, subtract 35, I'm sorry. So subtract 35 on both sides to solve. That gives me negative 20 is equal to 2,500 times A. Divide by 2,500 on both sides because this is being what's being multiplied to A, which is what I need to divide by. So I divide negative 20 by 2,500, and that actually gives me a nice A of negative 0.008. Now we found A. But I want an equation. I don't want just A. I don't box A. I'm going to take A, and I'm going to plug it in for A right here in the part where I had plugged in my vertex, and I did not know A. And so my final answer here is Y is equal to negative 0 0.008, parentheses X minus 50, squared plus 35. Notice the y and the x remain y and x. They do not get plugged into because this was a one-time scenario to find a. Now we are writing the function for all y's and all x's that work for this parabola here. Okay. So we plugged in our vertex. Okay? We plugged in our x and y from the point to solve for the a. And once I have my a, I place it in a, leaving x and y as x and y. Now, I'm gonna, we're going to pause the video, and I want you guys to spend the next few minutes working on the U-try okay, as you work through it. So about five minutes to work on this, okay, and the substitute will come around to check if you are getting it. So by this point, you should have had enough time, and the substitute should have um, gone through uh, and checked your work. Uh, if the substitute hasn't already, please make sure that you take a thumbs up, thumbs down of how many students got the correct answer and how many students did not get the correct answer based on what they're about to see here. So let's check our work. Okay, and you, once I reveal these, you can pause the video so they can check their work. So here is the final answer here. And they can go ahead and pause and check their work as they work through or as uh, to, to double check that they've gotten it correct. Okay, so uh, thumbs up, thumbs down as to whether or not you have this correct or not, and A is 0 0.44. You have X minus 4 squared minus 9. All right, let's take a look at example 2. Now, this is using a point and the X intercepts. Now, if it's a X intercepts, that means we are using intercept form. So we have write an equation of the parabola that passes through the point of 0, 9.6. And you can already see that I have the x and y there because each of your points here is going to be your x and the y that you're going to use. And your x-intercept, 4 and 24. The x-intercepts are your p and your q. So you're going to be plugging those in for your p and your q in intercept form. 
So if we have our x-intercept, so we're going to be using intercept form of y equals a times x minus p times x minus q. So I'm going to take my x-intercepts and plug in p for p, q for q, and it doesn't matter which one is which. Honestly, you could have made this one q and this one p. It really wouldn't matter. So I go ahead and take my intercept form, and I go ahead and plug that in there. And I'm going to, um, once I plug that in, I now need a. But again, I have y, a, and then now I have two x's, which means when I plug in this x from my point, I'm going to be plugging it into two places. So I'm going to plug in my x and y now. And that is, my y is 9.6, so that's 9.6, equals a times x is 0. So this becomes 0 minus 4 times 0 minus 24. Okay. Simplify within the parentheses. 0 minus 4 is negative 4. 0 minus 24 is negative 24. So you have 9.6 is equal to a times negative 4 times negative 24. Multiply these two together to simplify, and you get 9.6 is equal to a times 96. Positive 96 because negative 4 times negative 24 is positive. This is the same thing as 96a. So I'm going to divide by 96 on both sides because I want to get a by itself and it's being multiplied. So I divide by 96 on both sides and that gives me here that a is 0 0.1. So 9.6 divided by 96 is 0 0.1. So what do I do here with my a? Well, I take it back up here where I had my x-intercepts but didn't have a. I leave my y's and my x's in the function and I take 0 0.1 and put it in for a. So my final answer here is y is equal to 0 0.1 x minus 4 x minus 24. And that's my final answer. So very, very similar process to the vertex form, except I, I'd even argue that it's probably simpler to work through here. But again, once you find your a, you have to go back where x and y were just x and y, and you just plug in your a and your x-intercept here, or in the top vertex form situation, your, ver your vertex, okay? Go ahead and pause the video. I want them to spend five minutes doing this you try here, okay? All right, so now that you've had a chance to try this you try, here is your final answer. I would like you to, again, once you see it, give, give a thumbs up or a thumbs down as to whether or not you were able to get it. So y equals negative 0 0.625 times x plus 2 times x minus 4, okay? From here, okay, I, if you have an, a good standing on this, you can go ahead and begin your exit slip. Um, if you feel like you need more practice before you do your exit slip, you may begin your student journal assignment on page 42, numbers 1, 2, 3, and 5, 6, 7, okay? Now, this assignment is due on Thursday. This is not optional, so but it is optional to either do it before your exit slip or after your exit slip. That's the optional part. Now, the student journals are on the bookshelf in the back. Okay, you may grab one and do the work inside your, your uh, notes notebook. Um, and then once you're done at the end of the period, you're going to put those journals back in the correct numerical order. But here is your exit slip for the day. I will check it when I come back on Thursday. It is due then. Good luck. Um, if you have any questions, please come see me for tutoring tomorrow morning at 730. Hope to see you guys there.